there's nothing there to drive that. No tank fuel in the tank, and everything's got to be put in from the outside. And that, that's that's all this amounts to is is it's just another way to look at energies and, and what's happening in our environment and what's going on that is probably being left behind a bit. Kim Kiss has done a bit with Patrick on, on similar sort of stuff and, and dealing with the grief and, and stuff in landscape and those sorts of things. And there's a lot of unknown trauma and stuff that's happened through the landscape over the years that is holding country back. And it's not only that, and as you lift, each level you lift, there's another layer that you've got to look at and deal with. You mm -hmm. just don't get rid of it once and it's all finished with. So that's just something else to think about. Then we tied it in with this sort of information. Then this, this is so a frequency, so sound frequency for healing. Um, all these things, like the like 174 hertz removes pain, and, and you think about that in your life, but most people are running at 90, 80, 90, 100 hertz sort of thing. And some people down at 40 hertz, so you're nowhere near being able to heal to remove a bit of pain out of your body. Influences energy field, liberates you from fear and guilt, and all those sorts of things, and it's not until you get to 528, which is what we've been talking about a lot, love and things like that, that your DNA starts to repair, it starts to get waking relationships and, and you get into more of that big picture stuff, that, like the, the rising of consciousness. So you look where, like most people, like country, are sitting down here, in this sort of area. Now, yeah. if you look at this, you say, we can change this by living in a better state, and we can, we can definitely live. Make uh, changes. But I'll just show you a couple of things of why it makes it so hard to make changes. Oh, so anyway, that just brings in this. So that when you play music and you might play it for an hour, the DNA repeats, but that's only one twenty-fourth of the day. So it's only a very small proportion of the day that you're actually in that state. When you're trying to live in an emotional basis of peace or joy or love, you might live there for an hour, but there's 24 hours of the day, so you're only at 600 hertz for a little while. So, so if it was all coming from within, you think about this fella, like little dogs, always joyful, happy, running around with a smile on their face, they've got everything supplied. But they're an epitome of living in love and light and abundance and gratitude. And they're always happy. And if we can bring it all out from within, these fellas should be way on top. There should be no load there. But if you, you start testing and playing around muscle testing with that, he's only running about 80 hertz. Right? Even though he's living in that state. So we all get to the point we can it's a state we choose to live in that will make the difference, but this is just highlighting that that it's more than just a state you choose to live, because they choose to live in that that joyful, abundant, fun, best day ever state. And that's where they live. It's just naturally like that. So so in but in the last fifty years you'd see with the marvels of modern medicine Dogs living in that state, turn a hell of a lot better nutrition. We've ma managed to decline the average lifespan of a dog from 14 years to nine. Wow. Right, so there's more environmental stresses that, that's going on, and, and dogs are, are something, they have very short generational time span. So since in the last 45 years, around it came out about 45 years ago, you probably had eight to 10 generations of dogs. And we're many. So, so, so is some of that to do with food though? You're talking about an age of a dog. Yeah, it's to do with food, it's to, to do with electromagnetic frequencies, and the environment, genetics, vaccines, medications. Yeah. It, it's a whole picture, it's not oh, just okay. one aspect so of it. It's just where they've got to. With everything we're doing, that's where we've got to. And it's with cattle, it's with horses, 
it's right across the board that we're seeing a decline in the general health and we know that, that's why we're all here looking to see what we can do. So that was more of an instance there to show you that attitude doesn't always get you the end result. It helps. <laughs> it's a big thing, but it doesn't always get you there. So here we go, the environmental stresses. So you get 240 volt power, all this stuff that runs around our houses and everything. And these lead lights are probably worse in some fashion, but you put down other stuff. But runs at 50 to 60 hertz. So if you sit in front of a TV or sit in a house all day or a classroom and things like that, and you wonder why you've got no energy left at the end of the day, that's why. You've been surrounding yourself in, in an ambient energy of 50 to 60 hertz. And we go back here, 50 to 60 hertz, how does that cope with where you're living? Mm -hmm. Apathy. You know these kids that sit around watching TV all day, where do they sit and come out at the end of the afternoon? Yeah, okay. Eric, if you drop the voltage, does the frequency, does the frequency go up? No. Drop the voltage. Yeah. Does the uh, frequency is set and at that 50 to 60? No matter what voltage? Yeah, so yeah. even one turn in America, I think it's still at 50 hertz. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in the ancient world, the electricity was 2 to 3 volts. Yeah. Yeah, the DC is different. DC has no frequency, it's just a flow. I wonder if they wanted to get rid of that. Yeah, that's what I'm produced AC. Yeah. yeah. So if you live in a uh, in solar DC, not an AC inverter, then there's no energy, there's no frequency there, so it's, it's much healthier for you to live in like 32 volt DC house. Yes, yes. There's no frequency. It's just a flow of energy, which doesn't matter. kids these days or people office workers and people struggling with things that's why so many get out and train and, and do things and, and it's great for them so you got once again back to the food lacking vitality and we're all addressing that in minerals and, and that's why we're trying to grow better food and mineralize our food better people better soil better compost and all that that's why we eat that's that's exactly where we're at now with that stuff heaven is exposure well that's that's pretty obvious. We all know what's going on there with, with some of these ones. Um, negative thoughts and energies. This gets back to your mindset. How, how do you live your life? What do you go through? But if you're, you're surrounded by grief and apathy and fear when you watch anything you see on mainstream media these days, I, I turned it on for 10 minutes the other day and I just. <laughs> yeah. Totally shocking. Yeah, just just the attitude and, and what they're telling you. Well, it, it, what they're, are they at an actual frequency that yeah. they're doing us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, did yeah. these TVs have a frequency they transmit us? So, if you've got a LED that's actually flashing mm -hmm. and you've got a specific frequency, and that's what sometimes LED lights affect Yeah, well, these little ones here are mm -hmm. incandescent. Yeah. TV producing that same hertz, but you also got what they're telling you is the, yeah. the frequency and what they're actually telling you, mm -hmm. and, and creating with their words and, and back to words that have power. They're creating these states, and what, how much good is going on in the world, and, and everything you see on the news is negative. So what we find is, is now you work through in your life and you'll, you'll work on different issues and you'll hear, do different types of healing modalities, different energy healing, chiropractic, 
whatever you use is all working on different, different instances or learnings in your life. Right? So what we found with our work was we've been doing a lot of healing for a long time, but our energy was still not lifting to the area we, we were wanting it to lift to or, or get to. So what was holding us back? And it was the environmental atmosphere, the ambient energies that we live in that is actually creating a load that pressurises the body all the time. So once we understand that we can start working on these environmental stresses, es esoteric type stuff, ground lines, all vaccines, just the whole ambient energy that we live in. Like back to the news, all that sort of stuff that you see, the houses and things like that. Then you think about this for a second. Look, total love, respect, gratitude for the people who went to war and things like that. But every year we have a ceremony, it's like a sculpture, it is granite, bottom of granite, which projects energy in, in a lot of the old field information and stuff. We go in there with grief and sadness, load that thing up and it projects out over the environment for the whole year. Oh, wow. So just something to think about. Now, if we go in there with peace and love and gratitude for what the, the people have sacrificed and gone through before us, it will then produce, project something totally different. But if we go in there with grief and you see these ceremonies where, and understandably, there's people in grief about what's happened in life and, and what's happened before. That is what that sucks out in and puts out. So, so you think about that, that how they everywhere, like, as I say, total respect for what, for what people went through and things like that. But we need to have gratitude for what they've, they've done, have a bit of peace in our heart, and, and, and acknowledge the fact that not get tied up with the, the fear and the grief of what the experiences were. So it's just a thought, just a thought. So originally, a couple of years ago, we made these basic tools something to carry on you, something to work on your food and water. So you put them on your food and water and it helps get rid of those toxins we were talking about before uh, and, and energises it. The food and water one was set at 5, 540 hertz. So it, it was set to, to actually help things regenerate themselves. And uh, that card over there was, was originally set at 600 hertz. So in, in that peace and love sort of environment. And that just they were just set up basic little tools to help with your personal space. So when you went somewhere, or EMF, that you were found that that one there particularly drowns out EMF frequencies like for phones and, and testing power boxes for NTVs and things like that. So it's not stopping them, it's just drowning them out with a higher frequency so they don't affect the near as much. So that's where we went and we started to think, how can we look after our energy of our space better? And what do we need to do to fix that? So with our healing work, we've, we've identified lots of things in the environment and stresses that kept coming up over and over again. I, I'll sit there and muscle test. We do, I do something like two and a half thousand cleans a year. And I was doing that for 10 or 15 years. So we're looking at a lot of data, a lot of statistics, a lot of, a lot of stuff coming through generally. And, and what repeats itself and what keeps coming in as load. And, and it hasn't been that able to, when you're working on a person, and, and fair enough, you are working on the environment around them, but you still have to work on the environment. Because some of it, the person, you'll live so far, but the environment doesn't support them. So you couldn't push the person too high or too quick because the environment was a problem, or you, you try and do the environment, and the, the person was a problem. So, there's coaches around when it all comes from us. Well, yeah, most of it does, but there's a lot of hidden stuff we don't even understand that, that's happening in the background. So, so when you start looking at landscape and things like that, it's got the same problems as, uh, as we're saying, Roundup Don Huber sort of work 22 year half-life in the soil. So it's affecting nutrient cycling through the soil for 22 years after it reaches. And my testing showed me enough, if four litres of the heat there on, on the country. Um, and the half-life thing really kicks in and it's 22 years half-life. 
Now, Williams product, fantastic, you can break it down a lot quicker than that. But if you think about where most of our food's grown now, how many kit liters of ground up have been sprayed over the last 45 years since it was developed? And how much change that would have made? And how, how long is that going to be before it releases from the system? We we do release it energetically by matching frequencies and clearing it out in the different process. And we've had some pretty good success with that. And it doesn't matter whether it's bacteria or 24D, 245T, all coming through generation. We've had little girls we've worked on with behaviour problems. And it was DDT poisoning. Now her grandmother had worked on the tick gate. Mm -hmm. Like, and she'd never been near the tick gate on her. Mm -hmm generate 30 years before she was even conceived sort of thing. We've had another young fellow at one stage had um, emotional trauma issues that was a problem. And he, he, one of the first remedies that came up for him was a clomide, which was a fertility medication. We're talking to, uh, to his father and he said, I'm not sure where this has come from. We put it in there. His mother was on it to, to conceive him a fertility medication. Now that was still affecting him in his physical life at 21, right? And, and, and his attitude. So the load, some of this load we're talking about is coming through generationally, chemically, food, whatever it's come from. And it wouldn't matter how much healing work you did or self-reflection or looking at things and going through things, you, you still never would have identified that was there. So we've got to start looking deeper and looking, and that's why everyone's an individual. You, you never know what journey you've come, come from or, or where it's going. So how does it affect the land? Well, property the land's the same. What traumas went on the land, what's happened in the environmental, what, what all these values like the prime example. We, we were managing a place at um, Ralph Downey that we had a lot of full blood wagon cows. And the first year I was there, I got there in October, they just were calving. We put 500 hours into those cows to, to keep calves alive, scours and ill thrift. And end up, we, we worked with tuberculosis on them in the end to try and clear tuberculosis out of their lines. And we still lost 60% of the calves. Like that was November, December, in back down in the heat of humidity. Calving time was all wrong, the, the big mess. We, we worked with homeopathics at that stage and, and a bit of muscle testing, in the early stage of muscle testing. The second year, we still put a lot of hours in them, but we lost 5% of the calves. Like, and we couldn't change calving time that quickly. Now we do things different again, and we've grown up a few years back. So what about lean? How does all these energies affect the lean? So Kim was mentioned this earlier, the quality of life is governed by the quality of the questions we ask and the answers we seek. The only thing I'll add to that is we don't know what we don't know until we know we don't know it. <laughs> so the answers we seek are, <laughs> are only as good, as good as the information and the questions we ask. So if you don't know what questions to ask, how do you, how do you know to move forward? And, that, and how, do, how do we move forward? So, when you sit there and look at stuff, as I say, you, I spend a fair bit of time thinking about well, muscle testing about things and trying to contemplate how we can make things better. And it all comes from, we're all on a journey. How do you make things better? How do we improve the process? And, and it might come from a conversation, stay aware and alert. Someone might have a conversation with you across the room and you'll, it'll trigger something to look at a different avenue down the track. Like, We've all got to take responsibility for this learning and the growth and look and search. It's, it's not going to come to you on a silver platter, and nothing ever does. So once you get that idea that you're looking and searching and, and going on and on and on, like, you've got to work out how to, to measure things, right? How do we relate this knowledge we're learning? How do we, how do we Decipher the good stuff from the bad. And not good stuff from bad, just what's relevant, probably. 
what realm which we are doing and where we're at. Um, so that's where we bring, we early stage stuff, we used to just muscle test um, for a long time, just muscle test, just a simple yes, no, because that's all we needed with our, our healing work, that's all we needed. We were going through big pages of information, depending on weight to slope what we're dealing with. Uh, and we did that for years, but now, as we've got a bit more further down the track, we're revisiting the pendulum a bit, and we're using this chart a lot. Because you'll get a yes answer, and can I use this product? And it'll tell you yes. Ask how good is it for you? Hmm. Of course you can use it, <laughs> but you might only get plus one. Or you can use it, yes, you can use it, but how good is it for you? And it'll be bloody minus four. Right? And start looking deeper and deeper into these questions and looking at is there another product that's better? Is there some way around it? But we've all got these tools available to us and it train your pendulum to work, train, use the basic tools. It's in life, that's we'll get you through when a lot of a lot of save you a lot of heartache in the long run and get you through the deeper knowledge and deeper understanding. And we talk about the heart space where I put a oh I probably did it a bit of fans, but yeah, I'll tell you the story about a bike in a minute. But everyone comes from a different journey. Now I did a did a public speaking thing oh, probably 15, 20 years ago. And one of the things, they were talking about how to get into emotional states for different presentations. Right? And I was there, and I'm just bushy, still front, whatever. And I couldn't even comprehend what half these emotional states meant. Never mind how to get into these emotional states to feel that, to, to project that. So, so not all of us have uh, touchy feely and, and emotional people. Some of us are more physical people, some of us are more intellectual people. So some of these concepts seem a bit stretchy and un, un, not stretchy, but just uncomfortable for where our knowledge and our, our point of time is. The least dowsing and the basics of dowsing can help you to understand those feelings, can help you to understand better, formulate better questions and look for deeper answers. So, can I use this product? Yes. Is it any good for me? Yes. Is there a better product in this range? Yes or no? What? If I did use it, what is it going to be? How good? If you get a couple of yes, and you might still come up with a plus seven. Or, if you're making a question or formulating a question, write it down then and see where that question will come up for the answer you're looking for. And if you, you, you might have, um, I'm trying to think of the question, but the question might be really basic, like repair, or you could, you could be writing an intent to fix something, like repair or restore. And it might be regenerate the word you need. And you, you, you go to repair and it only comes up there. And you think, oh, that's not a very good answer. So what word do I need to change? So test which word it is, and it might be then, I'll restore. It might come up to a plus five. So then you can start modifying and, and updating your language and how you talk and how you, you project to get better and better answers. Does that make sense to people? Yeah, yeah. Right. brilliant. Eric, do you think that um, the intent you have on that word that you're asking, it doesn't matter what the word is? Like whether you're saying regenerate or whether I'm saying rejuvenate or... If yeah. my intent is the same... But it'll mean different things to you. Even inside, even if, if your intent is that, yeah. and that's part of it for sure, but you, if, if you're writing it to to then project it or writing it to put it on the wall to look at it every time, mm -hmm. you'll have an internal belief around that word that you may not you actually... Be aware of. Might, may not be aware of. Yeah. That's probably the word. So you'll say, oh, this feels right. Is it right? Yeah. 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 Question everything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so people who are using pendulums and stuff, question everything. You've got the tool in front of you. Mm -hmm. Using it. Take the time and make use of it. 
because that leads you to, to better and deeper knowledge. And, and better and deeper knowledge then will help you to learn how to lift your energies and, and develop those processes and save you a lot of time. Old knowledge revisited. So, so what we got to back here is how do we fix our country? How do we project more? We were using basic tools. We can heal that by matching frequencies. We got to a point that unless the environment was running at a higher energy, clearing things was only clearing things. It only lifts, trying to develop energy from within only goes so far if you're not supported around that. So it'd be asked some questions. So we started looking into old knowledge. What was used in the past? What's, what has been around for a long time? What can be used? So we found these, these are Irish round towers. So it's basically <coughs> a paramagnetic earth tower in Ireland. Very old, this sort of stage. The point on them, there's a fair bit of discussion around whether it's been put on later or whether it was on the original towers. What was in the landscape around those towers, animals and stock and people were healthier. Right, so, so as they had left less health problems, there was no doctors around needed in those areas. So there's a fair bit to do with the paramagnetic powers of these towers to help with environment over, over a certain area. Back to, so they, they were doing the job. They were actually doing something and making changes. Now, how much of a change they were making back then might have changed to what it is now, because there's more stresses and different stresses now on that country. But if they've had, got, had less time needing um, industrial type processes to keep production well and keep stock well, well they've probably held for longer than most things. The value of energy value around those towers now is probably very disappointing. I guess it's something I'll say. But that was the original thought for Harris's behind it. So, old knowledge. And it worked for them in time. Paramagnetic earth. Like old founded buildings. They talk about electric culture and, and currents and back in the go into the 1870s and all that sort of time. They, they used to use these spires to collect ether energy to put into their veggie gardens, right? So early stage sort of electroculture type sort of principle. So, and then you see these windows, before they put glass, glass in those windows, there used to be the air going through them would create frequencies of healing. So a lot of those old, old founded buildings, because I'm not sure whether they were originally churches or whether they were healing centers or, or what they were originally upon, but actually, emanated different frequencies. And there's, there's work out there that shows that you put plates of sand or you put water in there and you can see the frequencies that they're emanating and all these old symbols and all those sort of stuff is knowledge and technology that has been lost or, or converted or hidden or, or, or distorted, I suppose, the word, for, for different reasons. And I don't know why, it just is. And, and, and the science and the information you see in history is back again to that use that pendulum. Question everything. Ask. Yeah. It, it, it is a lot of stuff that, back there that's been hidden. And look, I'm not a flat earther, but there's a lot of information that's been hidden away from everyone for a long, long, long time that back to the, the time of of technologies where they could cut rocks and they could do things like that. It needs to all come forward now. Now is the time for that hidden knowledge to, to come forward. People will find it impossible to hide. Yeah, yeah. And, and I hope that's true because it's a lot of this stuff, simple stuff that... Yeah, but it won't sit comfortably with an individual. Yeah. As we go into ethics, the individual must reveal what they know. Yep. Otherwise, it just doesn't sit with them and they'll start to get angry. Yeah. Yeah, so all these sort of stuff. So this has got more than just a thing. And even the spires, this one's a, I, I purposely picked this one out because it didn't have a cross on it. Mm. Because I'm not sure whether the cross was put there to stop some of those flows 
or the health, yeah, the, the, the divert energy flows and function, functionality or whether it was put there before when I originally built. Once again, it was founded. But some of these buildings went around a lot longer than science and money. Technology tells you. Isn't that, you know, you see all those archaeology shows and things like that, and they're just uncovering layer and layer and layer as you go down. So they're all being built on each other. Yeah. A lot of these buildings, haven't they? And, and the story around them has been built and built and built on each yeah. other. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we don't know what the original purpose was and what the original story was, the mud flood and all those sorts of things. Like, back to what you're saying, buildings built on top of each other. Yeah. Doorways, 12, 14 foot high, knuckle bones turning up overseas that are the size of a mini car and chin bones and things like that. Like there's a lot of information out there that there's a long way down to find that, and, and things like different races that we've never been told about. Yeah. So, so start digging and start, it's, it's exciting to see where it could go and what's out there and, and what energies and, and back to that old that old energy, start testing, I was testing country here a while back and 60,000 years since it was running at 30,000 hertz. And it's been on a downhill spiral ever since. Now that's just what I've found, that other people find other things, but imagine what, what your country can do if you're running at a decent level around it sort of thing. What we've got now is just what's left over. So, I mentioned there, then they got electric culture, they do these little spirals and put them in beside your plants, little little copper spirals, different copper rods, um, tunnels with cording, a lot of electric culture stuff, small scale stuff where they they'll run cables under the ground to transfer the, the ether electricity ether energy, it's not electricity, ether energy into the underground surfaces. Sort of thing. They put magnets on the end of them, they run I work on North South at, at Texas. Getting some great results. There's some real good, cool stuff coming out of the electric culture world that's very interesting. But if you've got a tower that's seven metres high, collecting an ether energy and sticking it in the ground, you want to know where you're sticking it. Because not all energies you amplify are going to be good. <laughs> Not all last, not all environment, like you might be putting on a water thing that's down on the ground, you might be putting on, a, on an old burial site. So you've got to dig a little bit deeper than that. What else, what other, like Dan and he, he couldn't go put his compost on a certain area of his pad that he, he probably diligently cleared and <laughs> laid granite all over and, and you couldn't, <laughs> couldn't do what you wanted to do with it. Because of earth energies and, and trauma and stuff in the landscape. So just because you do electric culture doesn't mean you're immune to testing and being able to design and shape them. So in relation to, like, I'm, we process our birds all the time. Yep. So in relation to helping the energy around that environment. Yep. Like I do certain stuff myself. Yep. And myself in relation to that. So can that sort of thing be improved or how can I just don't know how to say it. You know, I cut their bloody heads off. You know, it's just well even you know, it, you can it's alright to talk about the plant and Yeah, yeah. Well even with basic homeopathics you can work on the grief and the trauma around that. Right? So we're not just looking at one aspect of anything. Our journey showed it there's never just one answer. So if you look at your homeopathic world, there's a lot of energy remedies that will work on grief and trauma. And, and it's not only, and, and we know how it's projected around the farm. So it's probably not just affecting the ones you're killing, it's affecting... Well, we understand that. Yeah. So, um, and we give them crystals, we yep. crystals to help them yep. through that process. But, ne but then there's the shock. Yeah, well, that's another thing. The shock. Uh, and the stress, yep. and I have fun with it in yep. relation because the bloody took just picked, knocked a bit of meat off me. Yep. Right, it's your turn now. But even when you're getting your chicks to the farm, you're talking about you, you, you're stressing your birds when you get there. We 
we, we used to do weaning processes for homeopathics on cattle and, and take the stress out of them overnight, instantly. So you, there's quick ways to, to help with the stress, the emotional trauma, and basically that's what it is. It's an emotional trauma or shock or thing that affects production or, or affects vitality or, or nervousness or how things are coping. So, so there's multiple tools in different ways you can do it. You can use crystals, you can do what these power sort of thing, all sorts of ways to deal with it, but there's never just one answer. Mm. Eric, can I just backtrack? I, I yeah. think this is a good thing. We hear so much information, but in the modality that we teach, a student will ask us <coughs> a question and we'll just say, go and test it. And you actually said that before, so get your pendulum out. And the art of this work, and you alluded to that in your beautiful statement, is to be able to create questions or statements mm. to check yeah. in. So there is trauma still here from killing these chickens, yes, no. It looks like uh, emotion, it looks like an emotion <coughs> of shock, uh, emotion of loss. And then you go, okay, so the, the frequency that will assist with this is homeopathic, crystal remedy, and now. Yeah. So the art of this skill that Eric and most people in this room use is to actually create statements which are limitless and just test. Yeah. And you stay out of your head and stay in your heart. And go one step further than that. Instead of that, sort of what you're doing after you've already done the slaughter, like if you set it up with the chickens or whatever you're doing, barcode them into so they know that this is their purpose in life. So when we, oh, I do that. So when we get our chicks, we, or when I, you know, when we hatch them out, they all they know that they're part of the food chain. So by the time they get to our abattoir, they're quite comfortable and de-stressed because they know what's going to happen. Nothing's a shock. It's always, they always are part of the conversation. You, you are exactly on the right track. Yeah. So let the birds know that their bodies are going to be consumed by people who respect and are looking for something better. It's, 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 it's a matter of respect and gratitude. Yes, yes. Um, yes. And so what, once I've done the process, I actually send them off and thank them very much for being here with me. Mm. So I go so through So there's that probably no shock there anyhow. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, okay, I'm throwing it out there. Yeah. yeah, no, but good question. that's all right. It's a good question, and the way everyone deals with it. Mm. And it's, it's a production system, and Kim's right. Let them know this is your purpose, and this is where you're going, and, and we'll do the best you can while you're here to look after you in, yeah. in every minute we can. But it could be our stress of yeah. shock the head. That's yeah. right, it could be yeah. our form. Yeah. Like you need some mocks and therapy. After you've yeah. calm, yeah. cleansed the air, yeah. Yeah. chill. Yeah, well, it is. And, it and is. As Lisa said, it could be some minerals that will help with that. And, and Shane, with his um, tomatoes, what do they need today? Every day will be different. What do we need to do to to help this to be as good as it can? Yeah, and it is a bit your perception that you, you know, you know what you've done, and are you putting that upon that? So you should ask that question because it might clear your mind of that that emotion that you carry after you've been through that process mm. because if you're honoring them there might not be any residue left for you to worry about okay. worth asking the question oh, of course. Yeah. So that's probably the question i need to ask because yeah. you know like, exactly. it's an interesting thing and as you know you, like you put your hand in the bar and that it's it's, it's well, some of them will put their beak out and go have a go at it. Yeah. I'm just getting that last bit in. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone really copes with things in different ways. It, 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 everyone copes with the job and the tools. And things, ev and the big ever since last goodbye. Sorry. And it's last yeah. this. There'll be moments when people have a you know a brain fart and have a bad day, and you need to, and you need to clean that up. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and how you choose to live and go forward, like it might not, the words might that you're producing might not be concerned about too much at all. It could be more you, or it could be the dog. Oh, I, the I, I, I probably wondered, like I, I, I probably wondered from my own point of view because there's other things come up over the last six months that has still attached me to my father. Yep. And <laughs> and 
and it's an approval for him. Yep. And I have to let go of it. That's why I'm asking, you know, this, this, and I didn't kill him. Good to know. Are you sure? <laughs> So you can imagine that, um, you know, in some of the slaughterhouses and things where they don't use your skills or, or, or any of this, how the build up and negativity can happen and then the animals that generally consumed by people in the general public, the supermarket food, come through that energy space. You know, that's the first thing that, they, that the animals get besides, you know, all the stuff that's probably hanging out in the yards. You know, the, the, the meat, the end products do need to go. <coughs> the lady we work with um, worked on a feedlot for a little while, and they were having a huge number of dark cutters in the feedlot, and she changed that from about 40, 50 percent dark cutters back to about three percent dark cutters, just with only dark cutters. Dark cutters. Dark cutters. Oh, yeah, just in feed. So. so Setting the cattle up better through the, the, the feedlot system can give you a lot better outcomes out the other end. And, and, and it's back to using your energy as you can. And part of, as I said the second half, I think it was, part of healing land is healing yourselves. And, and, and I'll, I'll give the story about a bloke in the middle of that. In exactly that process at the present time. But formulating questions. Use these tools, work through them, Get comfortable with them. Have confidence, and if someone's laughing, you just turn back and walk away. Because it's your journey; it's not not nothing to do with anyone else. Have confidence. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'll catch up one day. So yeah, the electric culture worms. Now this brings you to a, a point that I was thinking about. That in the Hugh Lovell work and in some of these broadcasts and stuff, they say the ether doesn't come down under seven feet. Now they're putting these little twisted proper things this high in a pot on the, on the ground and getting results. So where's ether? Ether's everywhere. So it doesn't stop at this level, it goes to ground level and it works on everything at every level. So just through observation and start looking like some of these old paradigms and some of the stuff we've been told in the past. Like there's that many stories about homeopathics or that many stories about energy healing and that many stories about different things to keep models hidden and trapped and stop people progressing and understanding and growing to keep you in fear. Like start testing some of these paradigms and start asking questions and where can you take it and what's going on. Maybe those paradigms fitted when they, for that person that came yeah. up with it, but it's just like we're, everything's evolving, isn't it? That's right. And, and everything's changing. Like so many things in the homeopathic world that we've been in for so long. And you can't do this, well, we do it. You can't do that, well, we've done it. <laughs> we made a, and it's funny, I, I was on a site the other day that, oh, they've had a big, the meditative proving is how they work out how remedies work, and they had done a meditative proving on glyphosate. Just came out, latest news. We made a homeopathic version of glyphosate 14 years ago, and, and been using it with great results in that time. Roundup is different to glyphosate because of the AMPA in it, which is the ad adjuvant and it reacts in a different way. So it's not just the glyphosate, it's a roundup and every variation of that has a different effect on the body or the landscape. So, so waiting for science to catch up is just too slow. It's never going to catch up with us in this space. It's only 20 minutes, Eric. 20 minutes to go? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Take a photo of it and send it to Melissa tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you go into radionics world, a lot of people have touched on that. Um, great tools, you've got to be managing them all the time. Think field broadcast is another type of radionics device that that has its pros and its cons and there's um, good sides and bad sides to it. 
management and, and, and durability are probably the hardest things on that to, to understand. This is a tower we put in down at Walla Badar. It hasn't been in for that long. Two and a half thousand acres this tower's on, so get away from electric culture model, like we're working on big, big areas. Um, grazing, <coughs> cropping, and uh, stuck this tower in there. And I like to put them in by hand with the people that's there, because it's, it's, a, it's a communal thing. We talk through the process and things like that. This is in a paddock with 40 heifers. Stuck that in there. And uh, we went home, had some lunch, and Kathy and I were just down there, we were driving home. And that rainbow came up that afternoon and sat over that tower for an hour and 18 minutes. Oh, wow. When we drove in that morning to put the, put the tower up, Nancy's pretty in tune with things, and there's a, a set of song lines that run through where Aboriginal song lines go through, and they were humming that loud. And clear that they've been healed already. Oh, wow. And she's just blown away. So, so little things like that are happening, happening with instant, 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 really instantaneous in these cows going. Um, now that's that's the one. It, it's got a back to the the field broadcaster model. It's got below ground, above ground, so it can put out um, energies below, above paramagnetic earth power, so we've combined quite a few technologies. We've combined a bit of radionics technology in there, so it's got a broadcast string of it. So it's got four aspects of what we've seen before. And, and that's that's an adjustable tower, that one. So the, the next morning she went back out there, and you know what it's like, you put something in a paddock, something out with a crowbar or a shovel or, or post hole digging. Cattle will come from everywhere to, to rub over it and shit all over it and make a mess and whatever they need to do. Went back the next morning and sat there with three or four dogs and a neighbour and the thing. Wasn't a fresh cow pack within, you know, within about 300 metres of it. And the cattle watched it, put it in. They were standing over on the ridge line just watching the snakes. It never come to visit. So the change in energy didn't attract them, it, it didn't detract them, it just, they just didn't need feel they needed to disturb it. Um, and there's another lady that's got one in the house, she had a little holding paddock sort of thing, and they put the cattle through there and graze and stuff. Throws feed out, out of the veggie garden over the fence for them to clean up right beside the tower, from here to that little one there. And cattle have never rubbed on it. So they know, like, they know it's still good. And the, the other thing that's changed got a testimonial just the other day back from the early stage stuff. The cattle behaviour changes. They just settle the whole energy of how the herd moves, how they wean the calves, they like weaning calves, how the calves settle in the yards. Like just behavioural sort of stuff, but well before <coughs> production. So just early stage stuff. And yeah, they're really excited about how they're going. So yeah, the universe, it's got the dowsing, Paramagnetia, electric culture, radionics, principles for the field broadcasting. 20 years of our experience with, with making ferments and home, making homeopathic versions of different ferments at the moment. On our, our place, it's running really high, so they, they've got good, getting some real good results with things. It needed to be portable. We've got a little, little different sizes of We put one in, oh, what was it, Sunday we came up. We put one in a, a, a daycare centre up here in. South Cleve in, the, in the, just a little house block one. And Kathy got a photo last night of these kids just standing around this little tower <coughs> in the south thing. Sent one to Cairns, we can post these little ones for house blocks and sent one up to Cairns and his daughter. He turned up in the house, he had it laying on the table the night before he rang me because I'll, I'll position it for him. And his daughter climbed up and laid down beside on the table and said, it's still so peaceful here. <coughs> We put it in and it is lifted huge energies and, and, <coughs> and healing. Some of the knowledge that we've gathered in 20 years working on things alerts us to what we need to work on in that landscape and what we need to be fixing and lifting energies to, to make it work. So that, that one up there, he's got crystals that he saves, he makes saves from the mines 
and brings all these big quartz crystals in and puts out like a sacred spot for these crystals to come back to be safe. And these trees are going a lot better. So we've got years of research and experience. We've got in this house. Little travel buddy years, got a whole story around that side too. This is one that we don't know that I'll be in the post. So that's where our little cat line leaves were. We put it in, that was three weeks later. Oh, and that was about two months later. <laughs> so you can see it's making a change. <coughs> As I say, early stage stuff. A lot, of, a lot of things happening on people's faces, right? One of the things that's this lime tree here, when we first put it in, it had a small crop of limes on it. We put it in the tower of ours and um, it flowered again within a few days. And then it sort of stopped and stalled. And we changed, I had liquid in it, liquid in my, my tower, liquid ferments. So I changed that to pillar form and it flowered again going into winter. And there were still flowers on the other day at five and six. And still, still flowering, still going on. We've got mineral deficiencies, I really believe. We're not very good gardeners. We know how to work with energy, but we're not good gardeners. So we've got to talk to the composting and minerals and things like that to fix that. I'll admit that. I'm probably the worst gardener in the world. The little blueberry bushes are going crazy. But these are just some things we're seeing at home. The lawn is still probably the colour of this poster now. And we've got minus five and minus six as a basically five feet of lawn. So it's holding on, holding on well through what's going on by, by having it high end. Back to what Peter said, this is this 432. Oh, good on you. Yeah, I told you the point. Yeah. It is the 432 as, as a frequency and, and the lights and the harmony the around it. There's 440. What's it still? That's chaos. Chaos. So every, and, and the big thing about that is every, every organ is working on every other note around that, not the one that's functioning at. So, unless, and where we come to with a lot of this stuff is, if you've got an environment that is running nice and high and, and measure it, don't just presume, don't just ask to measure what environment is running at. Get into a habit of, because we, we assume too much. We assume we're being healed so our energy is lifting. We need to measure it. Find out what can we lift it, or where is it running? Because if you're in, you're running at 200 hertz and your environment running at 50 hertz, you're not going to get to where you need to be to, to these high levels that we're talking about. There's been too many things put in practice and in processes <coughs> to keep us at a low energy for so long, and, and the environment needs recovering and things like that. I was talking to one place I put a tower in. And it, it was, um, I put it in, and it was a k and a half from this bloke's house. And you feel like the tower just started working. We've done other energy work there before and plans and things like that. And you could feel it was just buzzing. You could feel it buzzing off the back of your neck and, and there. And, and they drove back and they had a had smoke and, a, and some kombucha or something. And you said the smoke tasted terrible and the kombucha was... <laughs> Not the wow. taste are totally different within 10 minutes sort of thing. So so that's telling him something. Two days later, he had calves in the yard being weaned. They went quite virtually instantly. Two days later, we had to move the cows that needed to be moved, and they run up the paddock kicking and bucking and playing in a dry autumn in, in New England. Like, just behavioural things are changing. And, I went out only two weeks ago. We went out. He's got a grain place out near Monadai. We put one in out there for him the other day. And he, he's, got, he's with a personal coach, and they're all saying the tower is you. you you've got to emanate these energies to be able to do the environment, heal, you, heal yourself before you can heal the environment. And he can never feel the emotions around what she was trying to say. But after he got the energy around him lifted, he could then feel the emotion. So if you go right back to the start, and what I mean by this, way back here, 
So if you, they say you feel your emotion, right, and that's where you'll run. We, we've proved that that doesn't always happen. You can feel that emotion, joy, for half an hour a day, but if the rest of the environment throwing at 50, you're never going to get to 500, right? But if your environment's running at 500, you actually emanate joy and you don't have to force it out from within. It's just, just you and how you think. And over the last four years, which was doing, because we've consciously made with our healing work to, to lift energies as we heal. So it's not only heal, what energy are they running at when we're testing? Can we lift that energy at that point of time and lift it to the next level or where can we lift it to? And you'll hear people speak, change and how they talk and what they talk about will change because you've lifted their energy, not because you've asked them to talk differently, because where they're living is what they express. That's where they're living is what they express. And that, that is a big difference. And it's not just your thoughts make the, the energy, it's actually where your state is. So are you buzzing now that you've got some power on your property? Are you the first night we put it in there without a driver, it was one very interesting night. The <laughs> 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 first, like, we guinea pig on ourselves all the time. And, and you yeah, know, at different times as we've been lifting our own energy, like when we first started being consciously aware of this energy, there's nights there that you just sat on the bed and chill, just buzzed. Like, and there is a bit of a natural sale, save, save you're in the, the system. Like they talk about frequency fences. So as you lift energy, you'll get to the next layer of issues or the next layer of stuff to deal with, right? Once you deal with that, you can lift again. So back to the healing, the journey, the journey of healing, you're always looking to grow and expand and get to the next level. But we've done so much healing work at the start, when we decided we could lift energy, we had no boundaries. So that's why those cars were only 600 hertz at the start there, because we had no boundaries, we lifted ourselves to 600 hertz, which was a big lift, and it happened instantly. So we're ah, not catching up. Crystals will lift energies too. Crystals will lift energy to the different environments, yes. So I, I'm just going to use Ian here. I said, oh, Ian, I've put some new crystals on it. Other things I've done yep. in the micro, spread across the paddock. Yep. Come home shaking like a, I don't know how to describe it. Yep. Rang a mate, lives in Tasmania. Really good psychic, went bang, told me where I work. Exactly where I drove over something. Yeah. Yeah, that crystals will lift energy. So they do. If crystals will do it too. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to get rid of it then. That's a hard thing. <laughs> and they all, a lot of the crystal trunk will, yeah, there's, I think there's charts out there that will tell you what different crystals are, uh, are vibrating at. I think we might be using lifting energies in two different. Um, oh. Uh, two different terminologies there now. You're talking about lifting energies and lifting the actual number, whereas I, I believe you're talking lifting energy as in an entity energy lifting. And, he, he's and talking about some of the tools you use to lift energies. Yeah. And don't forget, you no. need to direct that energy, Eric. Sorry. You need to give that energy direction. Mm. Yeah. So, so lifting, he's lifted the energy with the crystals, but he's got no direction for yeah, it. Yeah, he's got no. Yeah. So, so your your radionics instrument, whether it's a, an instrument or a tower, uh, you load it with a card, do you? Uh, this one's it's got a, a an intent impregnated in a, uh, a drive in there. Okay. So, where do you get the cards from? Make your own. Oh, you make your own. Okay. Yeah. So you can go to China to get them all things. And even the copper, don't trust you getting clean copper. Clear all that out before you start. Yeah, we have we have a we have a tower and a radionics machine. I use use it for biodynamics. Yeah. But I haven't used it for energy. That's right. I'd like to. Yeah. So there's a lot of these things that we're we're bringing in another layer into the radionic powers, another layer into all that sort of stuff. 
and you've got to get more precise. A lot of people didn't know about this lifting energy. Like, they just expect it to just change. Always remember, energy precedes matter. So energy will lift before you see physical changes. The first step to lift energy is to clear unforeseen blockages. And that last bit, clear unforeseen blockages, that's the... Yeah. Don't. You don't. don't know what you don't know until you know you don't know. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so we just want yeah. lift energy, but we don't go on the last one because we're oblivious to it. Yeah, you're oblivious. You don't know what's going on. And it's only because of all the, the 20 years that we've been playing around looking and trying to work out <coughs> exactly what we need to do and what's going on that we've managed to be able to figure some of this out. So Heinz, Heinz Gruber teaches yep. every time we are energies, we then bring better energy in yeah. to replace those energies. But you also must ask permission because just because there's an energy there doesn't mean it should be moved. That's right. Oh, absolutely. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And, and it's in all in how you, you, you define things. Mm -hmm. Even in a, in, you can do that with a intent, but it's how you just define that intent, beneficial, non beneficial. And, and your wording, back to your wording around those intents. Define what you're trying to do. I, even in the towers, I just define parasitic or, or detrimental plants or parasitic or detrimental energies. Because if you're running a property and there's 10,000 pigs, that's not going to be any good for anyone. So they're a detrimental animal. But, that's causing problems on that landscape. So it's not just about lifting it just for this purpose, it's, it's being holistic, e ecological in the whole process. And as you say, there is beneficial energies there and there's, there's highly detrimental energies. And, and don't think just because the place is running at, I don't know, some figures, 30,000 hertz, that you're not going to be attacked by things. We had a, our place is running real high and Anyone comes and quite well can say this in a few days, but the we still had a polar ghost come through the other day. Really? And, and it attached itself into the environment and just dragged the hell out, it like scared the shit out of me. Right? So we cleared the rock moves on when we work out what's going on, but even at that sort of level of energy there is load and problems that come back into the environment. So it's a constant thing to be working on, aware of and working for in the future. Travel buddy is another thing, we read things, but anyway, any, Martin's giving me the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to quick, quickly tell them why you made the travel buddy? All right, yeah, well, we're traveling and we were up the beach lot, had a tower with the car to actually put up a tent for the place. And uh, we were there for the first four days we had in the car and we had, didn't get to do the job until the day and the whole energy around that is an Airbnb was real calm settled beautiful sort of place to be and we think oh this is like fantastic and then anyway we went and put the tower in that night we could hardly sleep the energy's just changed back to where it was and, and three days the rest of the three days there were cold and it was bloody awkward and the energy was bloody terrible so hence we built something that we carry and keep our own a small space thing. It doesn't work on the ground. All the others work underground as well as above ground. But this one just works above ground and just continues to heal, repair, fix the problems in the background. We don't have to think about it. It just happens. It's just, you can still keep focusing and doing things yourself. But this is ticking along in the background and we don't even know what's there. So, that, that's basically where we come from. Do it right. Early days, yes, we want this stuff in, but oh, I think it's got a, a lot of potential to help a lot of people. I've reached for the most interesting marks. Any, any final questions before Martin turns me out? Can you finish your presentation? Pretty much. Yeah, there's something to think about. Fantastic.